welcome to part seven of my Explain the Explain Plan series, where we'll cover join orders. My name is Maria Colgan, and I'm a Distinguished Product Manager for the Oracle Database. The join order in an execution plan is the order in which the optimizer decides to join tables together when we're dealing with a multi-table SQL statement. Ideally, you want to start with the join that's going to eliminate the most data or the most number of rows. So the volume of data passed to the subsequent steps in the plan is going to be as small as possible. That'll help us avoid unnecessary writes to temp and slow down our query execution. Now the cardinality estimates and the available access path strongly influence the optimizer's decision when it comes to the join order. But the optimizer also follows some basic rules when it comes to deciding that join order. So let's take a look at those rules now. The optimizer will always select a join that will produce at most one row as the initial join in the plan. So for example, a join between two row sources that only have one row each is a very good place for the optimizer to start. So those types of joins would include things like a primary key lookup where at most one row could be returned or an index unique scan. If a SQL statement uses outer joins, then the optimizer must obey the join order specified by that outer join. For example, with the Oracle syntax for outer joins, that means the table with the outer join operator must come after the other table in the WHERE clause predicate. In this example, that would mean the city table must come before the country's table. The final rule applies to SQL statements that access database views. Typically, the optimizer attempts to do view merging, where the definition of the view is inserted into the rest of the SQL statement and the entire expanded statement is optimized as a whole. However, there are a small number of cases where view merging isn't possible, and in these cases, all of the tables in the view must be joined together first before that resulting data set is then joined to the subsequent tables that were outside the view in that particular query. How do I determine the join order from the plan? The easiest way to determine the join order for an execution plan is to do a depth first search. And by that, I mean, we start at line zero of the plan. In this case, that's the select statement. And then we walk down through the table until we find the first entry that actually produces data or rows. In this example, that would be line three, table access storage full on the customer's table. The rows from the customer's table will flow up to the parent operation, which in this case is the hash join on line two of our plan. Now remember, a hash join needs two inputs in order to operate. So although rows are flowing into the join from the customer's table, we'll need a second input before that hash join can actually begin. So we need to continue down the plan table to find the second input to that join. We find the second input on line five of the plan, which is the table scan of sales. So rows from this scan will flow into the hash join on line two, and the results of that join will flow up the plan to the sort aggregation on line one of the plan, the results of which will then be returned to the end user. But what about more complex plans? That's an excellent question. In the real world, execution plans that we're looking at are often much more complicated than the very straightforward example we just looked at. And although the depth first search approach will often work, it can be quite tricky when you're dealing with a plan that perhaps spans multiple pages or screens. So let me share with you a trick that I use when I'm looking at these more complex plans. When I generate a complex plan, I'll always ask Oracle to produce the outline as well as the plan. The outline is a complete set of hints that can be used to reproduce that specific execution plan. One of the hints in the list is always the leading hint, which will actually specify the exact join order that's gonna be used for that SQL statement. At first glance, the leading hint looks a little complicated, but it's actually quite easy to read once you get the hang of it. The leading hint displays the join order as an ordered list of table aliases and query block names. The aliases appear in the order in which we access those tables inside the query. Let's take a closer look at this example. 
The leading hint is for a SQL statement that contains three query blocks. Select one or cell one, which is for the outer query. Cell two, which is for this first subquery that has got the alias E1. And cell three, which is for the second subquery with the alias E2. So the first table in the join order is actually the department table that has table alias D from the second subquery that's cell three. That table is joined then to the employees table with the table alias E that comes from that same subquery and so on. What should I do if I don't get the join order I was expecting? If you don't get the join order you're expecting, you should check the cardinality estimates in the plan and correct any misestimates that are an order of magnitude off. Some of the leading causes of cardinality misestimates are missing or stale statistics, which can be corrected by regathering statistics using the DBMS stats package, a data skew where some values are a lot more popular than others, and you can tell the optimizer about data skews by creating a histogram. Function wrapped columns is another leading cause. So if you've got a function wrapped column inside the where clause predicate of your query, and you can't replace that function with the inverse function on the literal value in the predicate, then you'll need to create extended statistics to tell the optimizer how that function impacts the number of distinct values in that particular column. Another cause for cardinality misestimates can be multiple where clause predicates on one table. Here the optimizer will assume each additional where clause predicate will reduce the number of rows being returned from the table. If that's not the case, then you need to create extended statistics on the group of columns being used so the optimizer can understand the correlation or relationship between these columns and correct its cardinality misestimate. If the SQL statement contains complex expressions that combine columns from multiple tables or use a combination of columns and literal values, then you may need to use dynamic sampling to help the optimizer determine the cardinality estimate for such a complex predicate. If, however, your cardinality estimates are correct and you still don't get the plan you want, you should look to see if you're actually missing an optimal access method. For example, you may be missing an index that starts with the join column that makes the access to a specific table more optimal. I hope you found this video on join orders helpful. You can find more information on the optimizer and understanding execution plans in the explain plan playlist on this channel, on the optimizer blogs at blogs.oracle.com or on my blog at sqlmaria.com. Or of course, you can always check the Oracle documentation. Thanks for watching. <laughs>